Hi, in this video we start from 1 plus 1 equal to 2 and then we go on to derive the value of pi using a python code which starts with addition, subtraction, then multiplication and then division of multi-digit numbers using single digit operations. And then from this we go on to the Maclaurin series and then we find the value of pi. So ALU has single digit multiplier at least with four bits which I made in my undergraduate and then from that you are able to write pseudo code for multi digit operations and that's how it works. So after that we are able to get division and then we are able to get square root with some iterations and from that we can get the Maclaurin series and then we can get values of pi and e by running this code which you can run on your smartphone to get pi as 3.141 so on and e as 2.718 so on. So you need a calculator and you need to do at least 10,000 terms to get the value of pi and about 100 terms to get the value of e. So you need a code to do it for you in a smart fashion. So these are the plots of trigonometric, hyperbolic and exponential functions in the range 0 to 1 and you get y in the range of 0 to 2.718. And then we look at some Maclaurin series. Basically any function can be expressed as a Maclaurin series in terms of the derivatives at 0 divided by n factorial times x bar n. Now we are also able to get uh, the different functions in polynomial expansions in x, sin x, cos x, inverse functions, log, secant hyperbolic, hyperbolic, cos hyperbolic and other functions. As you can see, they are all summations in the power of x to the power n or 2n and 2n plus 1 and so on. And then there is a prefactor of n factorial or 2n factorial or gamma function or Euler function or Legendre polynomial or Bessel functions. So now let's go back to the basics. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, a symbol for 3 bars. 2 times 2 is 4, a symbol for 4 bars. 3 times 3 is 9, a symbol for 9 bars. Now 4 divided by 2 is 2. As you can see, the red line divides it into 2. Then 9 divided by 3 is 3, which is 9 into divided by 3 parts, you get 3. 1 minus 1 is 0, a symbol for nothing. Then 15 is 10a plus b, which is 10 into 1 plus 5. And then 15 times 15 is 10a plus b times 10c plus d. Uh, and then expanding, you get 100ac plus 10cb plus 10ad plus bd. And substituting the values, we are able to get 75 and 150. And then adding that, we get 225. So that's how product works. Now 30 divided by 4 is 10a plus b divided by d. That's 10 into 3 plus 0 divided by 4. And that's j plus h by 10. That's 7 plus 5 by 10. So 10a plus b is equal to jd plus hd by 10. That's 7 into 4 plus 5 into 4 by 10 or 28 plus 2. So 30 equals 28 by 2. So that's how it works. So you increment j from 0 and then you add the value of 7. You stop because the remainder is less than the quotient. Oh, the remainder is less than the divisor. And then you get the quotient as 7. And then 5 same way you go on incrementing until the remainder is 0 which is less than the divisor. So now let's look at 30 plus 41 that's 10a plus b plus 10c plus d that's 10 into a plus c plus b plus d. 9 plus 9 is 18. So in the previous value we get 71. So 9 plus 9 is 18 that's 10 and 8 that's you can write 5, 5 and then 5, 3. Those are the power representations. So a calculator can tell single digit operations and we are able to extend it to get all kinds of operations. Now let's look at derivatives. f prime of x is limit h tending to 0. f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. That's equal to y prime of x. f prime of x square equals 2x. d square y by dx square equal to g where x equal to t. That's for gravitation. That's calculus in gravitation. So f of x, you can write into the Maclaurin series as shown here. And the tail series is one where you open it around a value x equal to a, which is non-zero. 
which could be 0 to now for a change let's look at pythagoras theorem to introduce square root so if you are a man or woman as a child and you are of height 1 meter then the horizon to which you can look out for is 113 kilometers that comes from uh, square root of 6401 square minus 6400 square and from that you get 113 kilometers so if you travel 113 four kilometers and then if you are able to travel under 113 kilometers you are able to show that the earth is spherical now let's look at square root so let's see we want to get the square root of 196 and then you start at the tenth place and then you write 1 1 is a 1 and then 96 minus 100 is 96 and you add 1 plus 1 you get 2 and you keep incrementing until you get 4 so 4 times 24 is 96 if you look carefully x minus 10a the whole square x minus 10a square is 96 and then 20a plus b times b equal to 96 20ab plus b square equals 96 so 10a plus b the whole square equal to x so square root is used in 1 by root 1 minus v square by c square in relativity tan inverse x equal to y or x equal to tan y so dx by dy equals second square y or dy by dx equal to 1 by 1 plus x square and if you open it up it's summation n c k x square to the power k where n equal to minus 1 and if you look at k equal to 2 as a special consideration so minus 1 factorial is minus 1 into minus 2 into minus 3 so on and minus divided by minus 1 minus 2 factorial that's minus 3 factorial into 2 factorial so you just get summation x power 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1 into minus 1 power n summation n equal to 0 to infinity so that's y equal to x minus x cubed by 3 plus x power 5 by 5 so on by integrating dy by dx from the previous term so tan inverse 1 we get as pi by 4 that's 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 7 so on so pi equal to 3.141 dot 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 so y let's look at e power x so y equal to e power x equal to 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x cubed by 3 factorial so on so y of 1 equals e power 1 that's e that's 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial so on or e equals 2.718 this is my website www.dew.extremeadventuring4.com and you get to see the code in python there so now let's look at the python code in detail so this is about 170 lines we first start with x equal to 25 as a character array and y equals 14 as a character array so x of 0 is equal to 2 and x of 1 that's the array element 1 is 5 and then similarly y of 0 is 1 and y of 1 is 4 so product is the product of the units place then 10 times the product at the tens place and then 100 times the product at the tens place so addition you again do the units place addition x of 1 plus y of 1 and then 10 times the tens place and then you add that values to and subtraction is the same thing you subtract the units place and 10 times the subtraction at the tens place so we then print out these values product sum and subtraction now let's look at division of x which is 25 with a divisor which is 3 so the dividend is 25 and the z equal to 3 we start with a flag h equal to 1 then while h a that's while 1 we keep on doing this loop so the while loop keeps on happening the indented region and we start with j equal to 0 as you remember that's the quotient so we multiply j times the divisor and then we subtract it from the dividend so dividend is 10 into x of 0 plus x of 1 that's x minus jz so we keep on incrementing j until the remainder is less than the divisor and then we notice that in this loop we always increment j j equal to j plus 1 so it starts from 0 1 2 3 until 25 by 3 you get we start stop at j equal to 8 and it goes to j equals to 9 then when you come out of the loop j equal to j minus 1 2 account for the extra counting by 1 so that's minus 1 that's 8 now you start with h so 
25 divided by 3 is actually 8.3 so you start with h so so that's you start with the remainder remainder is 1 so multiply it by 10 so r times 10 is 10 minus h times z so you, in each loop you keep on doing this until the new remainder is less than the divisor so until r2 is less than 3 we keep incrementing so what is the value so we start from h equal to 0 and h equal to 1 so that's 10 minus 3 that's still greater than the remainder the divisor which is 3 so 10 minus 6 then 10 minus 9 and then we stop then 1 is less than 3 and then we stop and we put the flag as 0 then it exits the while loop but it has counted h as 4 h equal to h plus 1 has happened inside the while loop so when you come out of the loop you do 4 minus 1 then you print x divided by division of 25 and 3 is 8.3 that's j plus h now let's look at square root square root of 314 a character a 314 you start with a equal to 0 the tenths place and then you do reconstruct the number 314 by 3 times 100 plus 10 times 1 plus 4 that's shown in sq of 0 times 100 plus sq of 1 times 10 plus sq of 2 minus 100 a square start with a equal to 0 so 314 minus 0 is 314 but it's not less than 0 so you do the while loop once more you increment a by 1 you see and then you do 314 minus 100 into 1 a equal to 1 and then you get 214 which is not less than 0 increment a by one more number and that's 314 minus 100 into 2 square that's 400 as negative so you exit the loop so you went to a equal to 2 but before exiting the loop the a became 3 so you have to do a equals a minus 2 3 minus 2 you get a equal to 1 so square root of 314 the first digit the tenths place digit is 1 then we look at the units place digit again you set the flag equal to 1 and h equal to, h a equal to 1 and then b equal to 0 so now you look at what remains when you subtract square sq which you want to find the square root of minus 100 a square so 314 minus 100 minus 20 a plus b times b so b equal to 0 you get 314 minus 100 as 214 so that's still greater than 0 you increment b by 1 then you do 314 minus then you look at 11 square then you look at 12 square and 13 square 14 square 15 square and you get 17 square it stops and then it goes to 18 and then it counts to 19 and then you have to do 9 minus 2 you get 7 so that's how it works so it stops at 17 and then 18 square it exits the loop and then before exiting the loop it increments it by 1 so the correct value is 7 and similarly for c we again look at 100 times the previous remainder and then we subtract minus c times 200a plus 20b plus c this comes from 10a plus b plus c by 10 the whole square equals s cube so from this the same way you go on incrementing the decimal place value until you get the correct square root and then you display the square root of sq as 10a plus b dot c now we look at factorial n so factorial n is a product from n n minus 1 n minus 2 so 1 till 1 or you can start from 1 1 plus 1 that's 2 3 4 5 and so on till n so that's what it does in the for loop it keeps on doing the multiplication with the previous answer until you get the correct answer as you see so sin x is x minus x cubed by 6 plus x power 5 by 120 so on so you can just multiply x star x star x and you are able to get sin x with 7 polynomial 7th degree polynomial cos x tan x and so on but a more elegant way to represent it would be 
in terms of a summation in terms of n like shown in this article where you are able to do the Maclaurin series and neatly express it as a summation in terms of some quotient uh, some uh, term which is a factor in n and times x power n and then we are able to express it in x power n 2n some because some terms don't have some even pass or pass and all those things some functions don't have it so we are able to express all the polynomials sine cos and all that in terms of a summation in n so we start with the for loop and we start with j equal to 0 j equal to 1 we get something we add it to the previous sum s and then j equal to 2 we get a new term which is in terms of x square j equal to 3 we get something in x cube so for x equal to say 1.1 so you do 1 1 0 as x power 1.1 power 0 times some intelligent function so plus 1.1 times 1 power 1 times some intelligent term plus 1.1 whole square times some intelligent term so on so we get something so x star star j basically x power j so let's look at tan inverse of x that's a tan x h2 a tan x so s equal to 0 we start with 0 then s is equal to s plus minus 1 power j plus 1 divided by 2 j minus 1 to the power 2 j minus 1 so j equal to 1 to n so we start from 1 if you put x equal to 1, you get 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 minus 1 by 7 and so on. Now we also look at exponential of x. s equal to s plus 1 by j factorial times x power j. That's exponential of x. So we are able to get exponential of x for any x based on factorial of j which we do it recursively in a loop for a large number of terms. As you see as x tends to a huge number as the j tends to a huge number you get factorial j in the denominator which means that even if you have x bar j the factorial j dominates and we have a radius of convergence so if you need x if you need the Maclaurin series for a higher value of x you need to open it up to more number of terms so to get the value of pi we look at the division of 1 minus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 and so on and so we start dividing so we're able to start with addition subtraction product and then we're able to use division it is a while loop and from that decimal division we're able to get pi beautifully with around 10,000 terms as you see I've used n equal to 10,000 and then for e I just need 100 terms so if you look at the answer you get pi as 3.141 and then e is 2.718 it took only a few hundred milliseconds to do this if you're able to increase n as a million you'll be able to see that it takes about a few minutes to do that and from that you're able to get more and more digits of pi it was previously found that the best value of pi is currently around a billion digits or a trillion digits and you need about 15 digits for space science and it was first found by a Welsh mathematician and then several mathematicians have done it over the centuries from 16th century 1699 to 2018 and the number of digits that they have found has increased exponentially and even Ramanujam had found several series which gave the value of pi. There are several ways to find the value of pi, tan inverse of 1 equal to pi by 4 being the simplest one and the easiest to prove. And hope you liked the video. Please like, comment and share and do subscribe to my link. And if possible, do put this video in your museum so that the children will be able to understand how the value of pi was derived.